Shut up and sit down. Howdy guys, Andy from Big Mac's Workshop Painting Studio, and it's the final painting tutorial for the Lord Battle of Pelennor Fields box set. So you've probably been waiting for this one, because that means it's uh, back to 40k and other things. Anyway, this one is the Ringwraith and Witch King of Angmar on the Felbeast. Uh, obviously, at some point I'll be doing a uh, little uh, look through the uh, entire collection, um, because, you know, it'd be nice to see everything uh, together. Uh, the cool thing about the Felby's kit is you get both um, the Ringwraith and the Witch King of Angmar, uh, as well as the Felby's, so you can actually use both. Uh, so, understandably, um, you can magnetise this, uh, bolt it all together, um, and left the riders separate, um, so I can swap and change them. I'm not sure what I'm going to be doing. As you can expect, it's a Ringwraith, so base coat of black. So starting off on the uh, armor trim, uh, just to get some uh, color on there so we can start differentiating between the different sections as always. And this is scale 75 thrash metal, and that's just a really nice silver. Uh, it's going to get um, a lot of uh, work done, a bit like on the troll, um, so uh, we can actually get a bit of uh, color variety around the weapons and the armor, make it look old and worn. Uh, but we'll get to that when we get to it. So, starting to pick out some of the leather work, and I'm using a combination of black leather and red leather by Scale 75. They get kind of nice maroony uh, leather. It's just a really nice base colour for it. And uh, obviously, I'm following that same uh, colour across the, onto the saddle from the uh, Fell Beast, also onto its uh, reins, and that sort of thing. Any of the leather work, because there's very little of it. I'm using the same colour because it's uh, it's all really saddles and reins, so I just want to try and keep it all sort of tied together. So I'm going for something a little bit different on the Fell Beast. Uh, I went, I had a look on um, Google Images, uh, found some interesting uh, variations on the uh, Fell Beast, and I was trying to take take it a little bit of a different direction to what you'd expect, which is a classic uh, grey sort of lizardy colour. Um, I wanted something a little bit more interesting to um, break up from the uh, sort of the dull colours of the uh, ring wraith, and obviously it's all black and everything. I wanted to brighten it up, uh, so I start off with uh, Bloodfest Crimson by Scale Seventy Five, and this is kind of a um, kind of a, a very vibrant uh, purple, uh, quite uh, uh, far on the red scent, red end of the things. So uh, very much on the red side. Uh, and I'm just starting to get the airbrush work uh, all over it. It's essentially just a base coat. I wanted a, a nice uh, light base coat. I didn't want it a, a completely solid colour at this stage. I was just um, playing around, trying to get some interesting colours uh, on there. So as you can see, got a nice sort of deep red uh, colour to the uh, to the, uh, to, the uh, to the base colour. Wasn't totally happy with how I was going with this, so what I started to do was mix some rainy grey into it. And that's going to take it back to a sort of a classic, um, a, a kind of a classic sort of grey colour, but it's got that pinky, purpley undertone of uh, underneath the grey. And that's just going to just show through as, it, um, as the beauty of the airbrushes, you can get really light coats on there. Uh, I do apologise for weird camera angles on this because obviously it's very difficult to get um, something of this shape on camera. And just sort of gently lightening the uh, red to more of a grey end of things uh, with the uh, rainy grey in the Bloodfest Crimson. And this is just going to change it to be a more natural grey colour, but all the same keeping that red sort of undertone in there to uh, give it a bit more life. Um, it's going to subtly change the hue of the uh, change the hue of the grey to uh, make it look a lot more interesting. There's going to be a bit more, um, well, if I want to be better, term, a bit more colour to this grey. So as 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 you can see, I've added some more rainy grey, um, just to bring them layers up really gently. I want it to uh, get a very interesting colour to this. Uh, fell beast. Now, as you can see, the airbrush probably needed a bit of a clean, so uh, at some point around about here, I gave me airbrush a nice good clean 
and uh, starting to add some uh, black into it. So start adding some depth into the uh, recesses around the bones and around uh, any of the areas where I think that the uh, adding some uh, much deeper colour into the mixture um, adds would be uh, pertinent, make a, a bit of a difference. As you can see, I've given quite an extensive, uh, although thin, sort of semi-transparent layer of uh, black onto the uh, cores. I'm going back into the, with a rainy grey. Um, still spattering a little bit, but I wasn't particularly concerned at this stage. So I've added some brown grey to the um, previous mix of the uh, Bloodfest Crimson and Rainy Grey. And what I'm doing now is I'm starting to get that nice... Um, grey colour with the pink just showing through as you can see it's just building up now I'm using really light layers which is why I do it with the airbrush not by hand because it's a lot easier to get the control over that as you can see that uh, those other colours are just showing through just nicely and we got a really interesting colour for the base of the uh, uh, beast. so back to painting by hand now and I've added some uh, black leather and red leather again uh, along with some brown leather now uh, just to just subtly change the uh, colour of the um, leather work as you can see just starting to uh, add some highlights to it really just break up that colour a little bit and just making um, those leather sections a little bit more interesting and uh, starting to add a little bit of life to it and it's really going to start um, changing the way the uh, ring ray feels. So I'm adding some uh, more brown leather now. And as you can see it's just starting to make it look a lot more um, colourful. And just starting to, I'm still leaving the uh, dark dark colours showing through. I uh, don't, don't want it to fully block it out. Uh, but I'm wanting to make um, the highlights really start to pop a little bit. As you can see I'm doing exactly the same thing on the um, on the Witch King, because it's essentially the uh, uh, the same model as the um, regular Ring Wraith, uh, just with a little bit more detail. So, okay, I'm now adding some orange leather onto the mixture, and I'm doing much the same as what I did with the um, the, the darker colour. I'm just leaving a little bit more showing through, um, trying to be as careful as possible to. Uh, keep the highlights where they will be relevant. I'm also doing the same on the saddle and the, uh, and the reins at this stage. Just making um, that uh, colour just really start to pop now uh, because you can, re you can really go to town with the uh, with the leather and uh, get some really nice uh, work. So uh, when you're working with dark colours um, these little touches of uh, nice bright colour really uh, set off well against it. So um, don't be afraid to uh, add a little bit, an extra highlight here and there. Um, it can make a big difference. Just uh, just be careful when you're doing it. So now uh, I'm going to start blocking in a little bit of detail work. Obviously um, on this uh, creature it's a mouth. Uh, the inside of a mouth, the gums. Uh, the tongue, anything like that, all based in uh, corn red uh, to get a nice even base coat on there um, just to uh, give me something to work with at a later date. Again, it allows me to see the detail work. I'm also going to use um, the uh, corn red on the fire from the sword but um, now we're moving on to some of the actual metal work now uh, using Scale 75 decayed metal. Now I did notice that um, the Witch King's blade has snapped. Um, slightly annoying, but not the end of the world. It still looks pretty cool. I'm also doing across the, sun, um, the pommel and the uh, uh, cross guard on the um, basic ring wraith's weapon as well. And um, anywhere uh, where you'd think would be uh, some kind of interesting detail work, um, like uh, the side of a reins, uh, maybe a belt buckle, that sort of thing just to break up some of the uh, other uh, much deeper 
um, colours. Uh, it just adds a little bit more uh, life to it. And now we're going with peanut butter. Um, probably not the best choice of uh, base coat for the um, spines and the teeth. Uh, in retrospect, probably better off with uh, Zandri dust or uh, something like that. Um, even one of the uh, mid browns would have worked. Uh, it took a few layers to get this colour on. Um, and as you can see, uh, we're being a scale setting five paint, we are, we are quite thin. Uh, so, a couple of layers of this, and we actually got somewhere after a while. So, now I'm going over the peanut butter with Iroko by Scale 75. Uh, this is somewhere on, uh, along the lines of uh, Upshapti Bone. And um, it's going to start um, making that base layer a lot more even. We're also going to start highlighting the colour as well. And this is just going to really start to. Um, set the tone for uh, the model's um, bone regions because we're going for a real uh, vibrant bone to stand out against a uh, darker colours. So now I've added some far brown. Uh, this is a colour um, I only uh, recently discovered um, even though it's been on our shelf for, fair, for a fair while and it really is a nice hi uh, highlight colour for things like peanut butter and um, Zandri dust, that sort of thing uh, it's quite a light um, cream not as light uh, not as light as uh, ivory but it's definitely uh, uh, on that way, it's got quite, still quite a bit of yellow in there and it really does highlight these, uh, see these bones really nicely And a little bit more far brown uh, onto there. Just start adding some actual highlights now, rather than just getting the base colour up. And uh, as you can see, we're just uh, quite um, we're essentially sketching the highlights in at this stage, um, being not being over cautious about the position of the highlights, um, so long as they're present at, at this particular moment. So it's about time we added a wash, so we're going to get some Agrax Earthshade uh, thin it right down and go all over any of the bones, so um, the spines on, the, on its back, uh, its talons, uh, its teeth, uh, any of that sort of stuff. Uh, Agrax Earthshade is getting just dumped all over it, nice and thin, um, but I'm not over concerned about streaking because this is just adding some depth to the colours, um, generally focusing the, uh, the ink around the base of the uh, spines, anywhere where they join up with the skin. So once the Agrax is finished and uh, set, we're going back to the Far Brown mixture and this is uh, going to tidy up all the um, spines and get rid of any of the mess what the Agrax has caused uh, by being a little bit sloppy. So now we're using some Mojave White um, as a highlight on this. Now it's quite a jump uh, from the uh, far brown, uh, but if you use the uh, paint thin enough and you glaze it on, it works re really nicely and you can actually get some nice effects from it. Now this is the sort of stage if you wanted to uh, add some um, wear and tear to the scales, um, you sort of add, start adding them now. Maybe add a few chips into it, um, paint, paint a few notches, that sort of thing. Any of that sort of stuff, uh, you could get some good effects on. This is around about the sort of time where you want to be doing it. So now I've got some brown grey by Scale 75. Now, um, this is quite a start highlight uh, on the darker sections. I'm using it to uh, highlight up the uh, flesh work. Um, Again, fairly creamy, but it's got a lot of pink into the, uh, into this colour. So it actually just naturally highlights the uh, the pinky grey um, colour uh, palette of the um, Fell Beast. And we're using the uh, we, we're using this to start adding some definition around the ribs and the muscle textures of the creature, 
maybe throw in a few highlights around a neck area, around the back of a tail, anywhere like that. The sort, um, the sort of thing, just work where you feel that the highlights would be most relevant. So now I'm adding some Harvey White into it. This is going to tie it into the claws, but also brighten the um, brown grey up a little bit, allowing us to add a few nice little uh, lines along the uh, ripples in the uh, scales or along its muscle texture. So I added some more Mojave White and I'm basically going to be doing exactly the same thing but I'm just painting on the inside of any other highlights. So it's essentially a highlight inside the highlight uh, itself. Uh, so it's going to really kind of start bringing those um, uh, well lit spots uh, nicely together. Now as you can see I'm using a standard um, GW small layer brush. Um, you could quite easily go um, down and use a, an artificer or a uh, double zero, something along that lines. Whatever works for you. Um, if you've got a brush control, obviously a, a larger brush is generally better, um, simply because um, you don't have to change so much, so uh, you can uh, get a lot more done between uh, cleaning and uh, um, repairing your brush. So, so now it's uh, Victorian brass. And we're going back onto all the metal work that we've done. The uh, the decayed metal is getting there. Uh, just a layer over the top. I'll show a little bit of the decayed metal. And what's this going to do? It's just going to start making that uh, make making those base colours a lot more interesting. And now for some amber alchemy, uh, just to add some nice gentle highlights over the Victorian brass. As you can see, um, whatever I'm doing on the ring wraith, I'm doing exactly the same on the uh, Witch King of Angmar. Um, they're, uh, uh, as I said before, very, very uh, similar, almost identical in many ways. So it was a perfect opportunity to paint um, the bo both models uh, up together. So at this point, I'm adding a little bit of thrash metal to the Victorian brass. Now this is a, a ring wraith on foot, what I just had lying around, and I figured, well, I may as well paint this guy whilst I'm at it. Uh, so it's uh, Army Paint Strong Tone. Agrax Earthshade works perfectly for this. Uh, it's just going all over the uh, uh, brass work. Um, a little bit into the metal, uh, the silvers as well. Um, the armor is going to be quite matted and pit, uh, worn and pitted. So... Uh, if you do go onto the um, onto the silver work, it's not a big deal because it's going to be going that way anyhow. And this is where we start uh, adding some uh, crash metal into the Victorian uh, into the amber alchemy, and just as a final edge highlights, get some real nice crisp, crisp points on it on the uh, edges of the um, of the gold work. And it's going to make everything just pop together nicely, and you can re really start to see the highlights from a fair distance. Now it's important when uh, highlighting this sort of thing to leave a little bit of a um, previous colour showing through so you get a sort of a natural transition rather than just some weird jump between a dark and a light. You can, I can hear you say, what are you doing with your armour? Where, where are you going with that? Well you'll recognise this technique from uh, the Mordor Troll if you watch that video. I'm doing pretty much the same thing. So um, as you know we've already got um, some uh, shading on there. Now we're going to highlight up the, uh, the silvers with thrash metal, uh, just to tidy things up, get our base layer back. Uh, we, obviously we want the uh, nice deep shades from any uh, washes we've placed on, but we also want the uh, armour at this stage uh, to have a nice clean smooth coat. So we're going to highlight the um, metal work up with Heavy Metal by Scale75. Uh, Iron Breaker or Roofang Steel would work perfectly fine. Um, it's uh, only a partial layer, so um, it's mostly just edges or uh, flat spots where the light would naturally hit, leaving some of the uh, darker colours uh, showing through because we don't want to take away from that. Um, it still needs to look like aged iron rather than uh, polished steel because that's not how a ring wave looks. The guy's been dead for thousands of years apparently, so 
it needs to look according. It needs to look right according to that. Oh, uh, time for a filter then. Uh, more thanks, uh, Brown. Uh, same as on the troll. This is ultra thin. Um, it's probably, as I've said before, about half the strength of a uh, regular wash. Uh, and all it's going to do is just get laid on uh, any other silver work weapon included, um, and just let dry. Uh, because it's so thin, the paint will sit on most surfaces um, without uh, running too much. And uh, after that, once the uh, I've done a couple of layers of that and it's nice and dried, um, I'm going back with the thrash metal, sorry, heavy metal, and I'm stippling over the top of the armor plates uh, and all the um, the Mornfang uh, to get a nice polished highlight, but what's not even, it needs to look a little bit hit and miss. Um, and all that does is adds to the texture of the uh, weapon and you get a really nice finish. So, um, for the robes, uh, I do apologise in advance, these are going to be quite difficult to see uh, as I'm painting black with suitably uh, little changes to uh, the next shade up. This is Griffin, uh, Griffin no it's not, this is Black Grey by Scale75 which is the perfect first highlight. Saves you on uh, for, for black, saves you on uh, make any weird mixes, and it's just subtly lighter than the um, base, basic black, but yet uh, also dark enough to be used as a black if you don't have anything uh, to hand. Now, what we're going to do is use the Griffin Grey I've already mentioned. And we're going to start um, laying in some highlights across all of the um, raised um, folds in the uh, ropes. Now, it's quite a bit of a jump, but that's not the end of the world at this stage. We've still got a couple of layers to uh, get it right. And we're also going to bring it back down again with the, uh, with the washers, uh, just to bring the colours together and stop them from uh, bleeding through too much and distracting the eye from the uh, other paintwork. Now we've added some of that rainy grey again. Um, I've started uh, doing this uh, a whole bunch in different videos using similar colours to uh, add to the highlights and it sort of ties the entire um, creature together. Uh, this is exactly the same because I use uh, use the rainy grey on the felbeast itself, and that will just add some real nice top highlights to it. And then we're going to bring it all together using dark tone or null oil, whichever you've got to hand. Uh, again, slightly thinned down, and that's just getting laid all over the robes and whatnot uh, to bring the three colours together and actually make it look like it's in black rather than some kind of weird patchworky grey colour. So, time to paint some fire. Uh, these have been, I've been waiting to do this for a little while and uh, now's the opportunity to get them done. So this would be uh, one of the final things you do because there's no real need to um, have to repaint this again. So I start off with, uh, as you know, the corn red as a base. Now I'm using Blood Red by Scale 75 uh, to start highlighting. Now everybody knows that flame highlights to the bottom, not the top. Uh, so you've got to be aware of that when you're painting. So you um, you leave a tiny section away from the top and bring it all, uh, when you're highlighting and bring it all the way down to the bottom of the, uh, the base of the fire where it will be hoist. The next colour is Antares Red. Uh, the Scale 75 Red collection is really extensive, so you do get a lot of choice, which is particularly good for doing things like flames. Um, and the Antares Red again, starting from about three quarters of the way to the top of the uh, fire, um, moving down towards the, uh, towards the base of the fire, uh, adding more and more uh, consistency into the base.
Once I'd finished with the Antares, it's Aldebaran Red now. And doing exactly the same thing, just again, a little bit further down. Uh, slowly but surely leaving more and more of the uh, dark colours showing through. And uh, getting some really nice effects um, with this uh, method. So the next colour is uh, Mars Orange by, um, by Scale 75. As you can see, it's starting to really uh, take on that sort of fire-like colour now. And you're going to get a real vibrant base colour to the, uh, to the flames um, without overpowering the, the nice red colours that you've uh, got coming through. So you can get a real nice uh, three-dimensional uh, flame effect. So the penultimate highlight is Amarillo Yellow, uh, which just brings images of Peter Kay, uh, for those of you from the UK. Anyway, um, Amarillo Yellow, really vibrant colour. Um, again, po um, painted mostly towards the base now. It's probably about halfway, uh, give or take, uh, to the top. So we're leaving that nice dark um, section at the top whilst bringing the uh, flames really vibrant at the bottom where most people, uh, where, where uh, the fire would be at its naturally hottest. And last but no means least, uh, high key yellow, uh, literally just focus right on the insides of the darker yellow sections. So we get this nice sort of flamey, uh, flamey glow uh, towards the um, bottom edge of the fire really making that fire stand out and uh, really pop um, and grab your attention uh, when you're looking at it. And there you have it guys, that is the Ring Wraith of Angmar riding a fell beast, um, all done and dusted, great mould of paint. I've painted ring race before, um, and with them being quite um, dark, and the, the, if you're wanting to go for the classic colour schemes, uh, can, it tends to be quite uh, dull. But painting the uh, fell beast uh, really took away from that, and uh, I really enjoyed getting the colour uh, right for the skin. It looks a lot more alive than the uh, standard uh, Games Workshop uh, artwork. Um, the purple really does add an air of uh, menace to the creature, whilst also um, attracting the eye uh, by being nice and different from the, uh, the grey. As always, guys, got some thank yous to make. So huge thank yous to you guys for watching. Please hit uh, like and subscribe, share with your friends, and all that good stuff. It's a massive help. Also, we'd like to thank our Patreons. If you're interested in joining Patreon, check us out on there. check us out on there. Um, we'd be more than happy to have you. So, huge thank yous to the Orc Boys, Matt, Ludwig Hofbauer, D Wack, Mark, Dave, Tom, Spiky Dude, Warren, Ben, Y Metal Gamings. Huge thank yous to you guys. Also, thank you to our affiliate links, which is the Outpost and Element Games, where you can get um, your standard 15 to 20 percent discount. Uh, on all of your uh, hobby needs uh, please check them out, the links are in the description um, and every time you do an order from them uh, we get 5% store credit at no cost to you so it really does help out keep the lights on and get new, new content in for you guys anyway, thank you for watching this video and we shall catch you in the next one bye bye